Hello everyone, and welcome to another term of the Foundation Patreon. My name is Matthew Zakri, and today we're going to go ahead and continue our digital section and move on to some compound geoforms. These are the shapes we were looking at earlier. What we'll do is we'll render up just a few of these so you guys kind of get an idea, and that way, you know, we're not giving you all the answers, and you can actually take a stab at a few of these yourself. Um, we're using the five basic forms, which would be a box, you can see that in a mixture of these, right over there, almost all of them besides these top two. We have a sphere, cylinders, cones, and then anything with an angle would be considered part of a pyramid. I like to plot out all my lines first, so my light rays as well as my shadows just to begin because that really helps me focus on the rendering when it comes time for it and I'm not worried at all about trying to adjust any of my angles or my cast shadow angle, any of that. Um, we haven't completely covered plotting yet, but I'll give you guys a basic run through. So right now we're working with cast shadows from directional light such as the sun. Meaning, if this is our ground, because the sun is so far away, like miles and miles and miles, all of our light is going to be parallel light rays. That means that it's not a point light source and it's not radiating at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put these little parallel lines at all these point intersections where our box hits the ground. And I'm mainly doing it on the ones where a shadow will join or begin from. There. And there. And we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to have this hit all of our corners on the opposite side of where our blue lines were. Light is going to hit this whole area right over here. Meaning that if light is hitting that section, there should be a cast shadow on the ground representing the same kind of uh, shape. So let's go ahead and draw that out. Alright, so let's go ahead and render this out. And now let's get those cast shadows in that we plotted out. And the way it's going to work is the local value of this object is a value 2. So any area that's in shadow is all going to be halfway to black. So it's all going to be a value 6, which is the 40 in Photoshop. I mean, we're going to take that. Going to take that. Going to delete some of this. And same thing here. I'm just going to do that as a new layer on top. 60. Yellow light rays. They're coming in like this. It's like a yellow green. They're going to bounce back into here. So it's hard for this light ray to bounce back all the way up here. It's only going to be close to the, the source of the bounce, if that is not confusing for you guys. Alright, so it's a 73, didn't get to that 80, that's good with me. We're going to do a little bit from this object, which is a bounce now, the source is an 80, onto this area. So I'm just going to bounce that in a little bit. 
I'm gonna now take the same value onto our right side. And then I'm gonna just bounce some of that into here. This is our shadow side, so one, it's not gonna get as strong as a bounce. But we're actually gonna have to remove some of the bounce in just a bit. And I will show you why. So what I did is I went ahead and I selected a shape, um, just something a little bit more complex. Since we did fairly more simpler objects in the beginning. And I already went ahead and took all the the sides and created masks for them so that way you didn't have to painfully watch me do that and sit through it again. Alright, so first things first is to determine our lighting angle. What I'm gonna do, and what I like to do, is I like to just take my line tool and kind of envision just how some cast shadows might look on this because it's more of a complex object. And you know, if I want the, do I want the light to go that way? So I'd have some shadows doing something like that. That could be kind of cool. You know, we'd have something there. Or do I want to do the more complex way and, you know, I'd have to plan a cast shadow for the angles and whatnot. And I thought it'd be interesting to kind of have something going on with this dome over here so that way it's not just in shadow and we actually can do something fun with it. That was the whole purpose why I included it. Um, I'm kind of liking getting some cast shadows like some of these cast shadows on and maybe it can almost just kind of catch the dome and wrap around it. So now all I have to do really is find where my mask is for my dome, reveal my sphere, and mask it in. Then we could turn our dome mask off. Let's turn that off as well as the drawing. And I'm just gonna blend it into this shadow of the cylinder. Alright guys, it looks like that is going to wrap it up for today's demo. Looking forward to your guys' work. Thanks so much.